I'm so happy, and I'll tell you why. Because Jesus is alive. Okay, I butchered the hand motions, but I'm excited because Jesus is alive. Amen? Amen. He is alive. And uh, it is the week after Easter. Traditionally, a lot of churches talk about when Jesus appears to Thomas. And so that is going to be our eyewitness this morning. Uh, Thomas is an eyewitness. Let me give you some background information on that, but let's open in prayer first. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, and we are happy that Jesus is alive. Uh, doesn't matter what's going on in our lives, Lord. We know that you're with us. You never promised to take us away from difficulties and circumstances, but you did promise to always be there. And so thank you, Lord, for being there with us, and thank you for making Jesus alive, not just on Easter Sunday, but every day of the year. In Jesus' name, amen. All righty. Well, some of the most important information about the post-resurrection appearances of Jesus is not found in Matthew, Mark, or John. Luke has the most detailed account of the two disciples on the road to Emmaus, as well as an account of the first encounter with the apostles and a brief description of the ascension. I'm just excited, so i got to slow down a little bit. Okay. Meanwhile, Acts, a continuation of Luke, notes Jesus was on earth 40 days after his suffering and gives an account of some of his activities during that time. Acts also gives more details on his ascension. In 1 Corinthians 15, 6, Paul says that Jesus appeared to more than 500 people at the same time, most of whom were still living at the time when he wrote it. That's about 25 years after Jesus' death. And, to James, and he also appeared to James and the apostles. Considering that Jesus was on earth about 40 days after his resurrection, the Bible gives us precious little information and timing. Here is one possibility of Jesus' appearances and activities. First, he appears to Mary Magdalene and the women. Second, he appears to the disciples on the road to Emmaus. Third, he appears to the ten apostles. Fourth, he appears to all eleven apostles, because Judas is gone at this point, obviously. Okay. Uh, next, he meets with seven apostles at the Sea of Galilee. Then he meets with the eleven apostles in Galilee on the mountain. And he appears to the five hundred. That's what Paul talked about in his writing. Okay. Then he appears to James. And he meets with apostles in Jerusalem and ascends to heaven. Again, that's just one way that could have happened. They're all recorded in different gospels, and there's different ways to piece it together. But it's a bit curious that Jesus met with the women and the two disciples on the road to Emmaus before meeting with the apostles. When he finally appeared to ten of the apostles, it seems he mildly castigates them for not believing the reports of his resurrection before immediately offering them peace and fellowship. In a critical moment, Jesus imparts the Holy Spirit to them. In a meeting with all 11 apostles, Jesus reconciles with Thomas, too. Three huge events are detailed. Fortunately, Jesus' appearance to some of the apostles on the Sea of Galilee includes a long conversation between Peter and Jesus. Jesus gives Peter the opportunity to affirm his love three times. And offsetting Peter's three denials, of course. Matthew gives an account of a meeting on the mountain in Galilee. It is at this meeting Jesus gives the Great Commission, a mission that has been accepted by Christians through the centuries. Matthew does say that after his resurrection appearances, some doubted. <laughs> Maybe a little dig of Thomas, I don't know. But anyway, uh, in Luke and Acts, Luke tells about the ascension of Jesus. With the exception of a small portion of Mark, these are all the accounts we have in the Gospels about that. And remember, Luke and Acts, Acts is actually a continuation of Luke, where he's writing to Theophilus and letting him know about the different events that happened because he, was an eye, he wasn't an eyewitness, Luke, but he interviewed eyewitnesses. He was like an investigative reporter. Anyway, uh, today we're going to listen to Thomas's eyewitness, a uh, reenactment of that. Hope you enjoy that. Hope you remember that Jesus is alive every day. And we are always available for prayer here at Highland Park Christian Church. We love you, and God loves you. God bless you. 
Original Doubting Thomas. Uh, the one and only. It's probably about the only thing you know about me, except that I was an apostle. How I came by that nickname? Uh, we'll talk about that in a moment. Jesus was on earth for about 40 days after his death. The Bible gives us precious little information about that time period. Most of that information is found in the Gospels. However, one passage in 1 Corinthians says, Jesus appeared to more than 500 people at the same time. The Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke I'm only mentioned in the list of the apostles. John calls me. Thomas, also known as Didymus. Since Didymus means twin, you can infer that I was known to have a twin. John mentions me four other times. Two before the resurrection, two after. First time John mentions me is when Jesus was headed to bring back his friend Lazarus from the dead. I knew that it was the beginning of the end of Jesus' career, probably his life, because he was headed into the places that were controlled by his enemies, the Pharisees. In a show of bravery, I told the other apostles, let us also go, that we may die with him. And we did go with him. Second time John mentions me was on the night of the Last Supper. Jesus said he was going away and that he'd come back to get us. When Jesus ended that statement by saying, we knew the place where he was going. I was mystified. I had no idea what he was talking about. Where was he going? I, I blurted it out. Lord, we, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? Jesus replied with some of his most famous words. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. Third and fourth time John mentions me will become apparent as we go through the rest of my story. Uh, after he was resurrected, Jesus' first appearance was to Mary Magdalene. Ironic. I guess he was rewarding her for her faithfulness. While well, we uh, apostles had deserted him on the last night and day of his life, she had served him his life and in his death. I was glad he gave her special recognition. I was also glad that he appeared to the other women that had served him in the same way. His next appearance was that same day on the road to Emmaus where he talked with Cleopas and his companion. They were about seven miles from Jerusalem when Jesus appeared. But they didn't recognize him, even though he talked with them. And Jesus told them all the things about himself in the Old Testament, and boom, they knew who he was. They rushed back to Jerusalem to tell the apostles the good news. They arrived that evening. Uh, ten of the apostles had already heard the good news from Mary and the women, and they knew that Jesus had already appeared to Peter. One apostle heard the news. He found another apostle. They found another. Scattered, hidden, all of us. But now we apostles gathered together, behind locked doors, of course, because we were still afraid of the Jewish leaders. All 11 remaining apostles, except one, me. I'd gone to hide with my twin and his family. They were staying on the Mount of Olives and were preparing to go back home after Passover was finished. We were among the poor people, so I wasn't worried that the leaders would mistake my brother for me. Nobody knew where I was. I didn't hear the good news of Jesus' resurrection. Now, the apostles, they felt safe behind their locked doors. Nobody could get inside without them knowing, and nobody. Except Jesus. He just appeared, stood there among them. Peter once walked on water. Yeah, this time he nearly walked on air. Everyone else was freaked out, scared out of their wits. They thought they saw a ghost. Peace be with you, Jesus said. Then he held out his hands and feet for them to see the nail holes. 
showed them the gash in his side where he'd been pierced with a sword. And they were overjoyed. They couldn't believe it was their lord, so he solved the problem like any good Jew, uh, with food. <laughs> he ate a piece of fish. Later, he blessed them again and breathed the Holy Spirit on them. He said that they have the power to forgive sins or not to forgive them. And then he left. The apostles searched everywhere for me, finally found me. Uh, they couldn't wait to share the good news, but I would have none of it. I told them that I would not believe that Jesus had risen from the dead unless I touched the holes in his hands and sighed. They... They understood my reticence to believe. They understood that the disappointment would be too much for me to take if they couldn't prove it to be true. So we stayed together, the apostles, for the next several days. Every night, in the same house, behind locked doors. Exactly one week after the Lord had risen, still behind locked doors, praying to God, Jesus appeared among us, just as he had done the first time, again, peace be with you, just as he had the first time. It's this time he walked over to me. Reach here with your finger and feel my hands. And reach here with your hand and thrust it into my side and stop doubting, but believe. I went to my knees. My Lord. Jesus said, because you have seen me, you have believed. Those who don't see me and believe are blessed too. Now you know how I got my nickname. Doubting Thomas. Shortly after this appearance, we disciples hurried to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus told us to go. We worshiped him, but some still doubted. I was not one of those doubters. And while we were in Galilee, we spent a lot of time away from Jesus. I don't know what all he was doing during this time period, but there were many times we were left alone. The third time we saw Jesus was on the lake below the mountain. Now, Peter was feeling down because he kept thinking about how he had denied Jesus on the last night of his life. Peter decided to relieve his anxiety the same way men have always done. Go fishing, get in the middle of a lake and think about nothing for a while. Well, sounded like a good idea, so Nathaniel, James, John, two others and I decided to go with him. Zebedee loaned us a boat and phew, we were on our way. And like happens to many fishermen, we fished all night and caught Nothing. Nothing. I know, I know, we were fishing to get away from it all, but we were still perturbed that we caught nothing. After all, Peter, James, and John made their livings fishing on that lake before they followed Jesus. As we rowed toward the shore, we saw a man standing there on the edge. Dawn was just breaking, so it was still too dark to recognize people on the shore. We heard, Friends, didn't you catch any fish? And Peter was like, how does he know? He wanted to curse at him like he would have in the old days. Instead, we just said, no. Well, throw your nets on the right side of your boat. You'll find some. Now, Peter was, uh, yeah, about to explode. Not only had he failed to catch fish, here was some nobody on the shore trying to tell him an expert how to catch fish. And the same time it took for him to decide to go ballistic or not, the nets hit the water on the right side of the boat. Nathaniel and I had thrown them in. We weren't fishermen. We didn't know it was foolish to throw the nets in one more time. He snickered as the nets sank, but uh, his eyes bugged out when we couldn't haul the nets up because they were buckling from the overload of fish. And finally, John said, so quiet. Uh, is the Lord. 
splash. I mean, not even a second later. It was Peter in the water, frantically swimming to shore to see Jesus. And Peter helped us drag the nets in, where there were 153 large fish. Jesus had already built a charcoal fire, cooked our breakfast and ate with him. It, 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 imagine that. Seven apostles and Jesus sitting around a campfire, eating fresh fish, dawn breaking over the Sea of Galilee. I can still smell it. Hear it. And the peace. And I never wanted that moment to end. Especially not the way that it did. Simon, son of John, said Jesus, looking at Peter, using his first name. You unconditionally love me with deep devotion much more than all these things. Peter squirmed as he sat on a log. We all squirmed for him. Yes, Lord, you know that I love you like a brother. Feed my lambs. Simon, son of John, do you unconditionally love me with deep devotion? Again, Peter squirmed like a kid caught stealing a cookie. Yes, Lord, you know I love you like a brother. Take care of my sheep. Simon, son of John, do you love me like a brother? Busted. Yeah, Peter knew he was busted. Jesus knew that Peter wasn't willing to commit himself wholeheartedly, but Jesus also knew that Peter soon would. Lord, you know all things. I love you like a brother. Feed my sheep. And with that, we all knew that Jesus had forgiven Peter for his three denials. It had reinstated him as leader of our group. I mean, Jesus did so many things during his life and resurrection that all the books in the world couldn't tell of him. John and the other gospel writers wrote down what they could, and it was enough that anyone who believes them can believe and have life in his name. During the 40 days after his resurrection, Jesus appeared to over 500 people, uh, many of whom lived for decades afterward and were willing to tell anybody who would listen about Jesus. As Jesus taught me, though, those who are witnesses for Jesus without seeing them are blessed too. You, that's you, you are blessed every time you are a witness for Jesus. One of the last things Jesus said in Galilee, we were on the mountain where he told us to go. It was there that Jesus gave instructions to all Christians for all ages. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. There is never a clearer instruction to eyewitnesses and to you, the blessed, who believe without having seen.